really cool. Right before we did this, Randall just tasted us on this really interesting new thing that you're doing. Is that something that you're ready to tell the world about, or is sure. that something? Oh, with the uh, carboys, yeah. the demijohns. This is really kind of a cool thing. We didn't get pictures, but yeah. Yeah, so we're aging some wines in um, five gallon, basically Arrowhead Puritus water bottles uh, on their side, and we do uh, batonnage, we stir up the lees. And um, there's a guy in Italy um, called Emilio Pepe mm. who does something similar. And as far as I know, I think he's the only one in the planet who, who, who else who does this one, this elevage. And it's um, it gives wines that are very savory, and very stylized, but but really delicious. We can taste some of the uh, bottled wine. Yeah, it was kind of cool because there's more lees contact, which gives right. you more of that fatter mouth feel, but also more of the savoriness. And you told me something that I didn't realize. When you think of umami, I always think of bacon, like it's the bacon region, but it's actually part of that MSG monosodium glutamate, right. which is actually found in some wines. Well, glutamates are in yeast. When, when yeast cells, when yeast break down, they release glutamate. So a lot of the, um, the yeast itself is, is glutamate. Hmm. So when you get like that soy sauce kind of flavor sometimes, or soy, that's actually related to that umami region. Correct, correct. Cool. Well, let's see um, if there's any other questions. One more question from Twitter and we'll try and wrap it up. Out of all your travels, is there any vineyard site that is your favorite? Again, that's a really broad question. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm going to tweet this person back. Yeah, tweet, tweet that person yeah. back. Um, old vineyards, old vines are very inspiring. Old vines have a majesty to them. You know, I'll tell you, I've seen a bunch of vineyards. The vineyards I don't like are the, are the vast California vineyards that are mechanized and soulless. I was in, um, in, a, in a vineyard in Switzerland, in the Valais, and um, this guy's called Fingerly. Hans Peter Schmidt. He has this vision of a vineyard vineyard as a garden, as a polyculture. So his vineyard, in his vineyard he's planted peach trees and apple trees and pear trees and rose bushes and all sorts of flowering shrubs and what he calls bee hotels and um, tremendous biological diversity in these vineyards. And he's found 60 species of butterfly in his vineyards. Hmm. I think this is the Garden of Eden. So that's it, that's what I aspire to do. Is it a garden first and then a vineyard? Or vice vineyard, or? vineyard, vineyard. But he's, he's kind of re-retrofitted it to make it more of a garden. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I would love to see a picture of that. Is this something that we can Google? I feel like we Google if we want to see that. Google Hans Peter Schmidt and um, in German it's Ithaca, I-T-H-A-K-A. That's his organization that works on developing protocols for this material called biochar and also developing formal rules for companion planting. So in other words, if you're planting a vineyard, how do you create the appropriate uh, diversity uh, of different species? All right, well, I got one more question. By the way, you got to try these. Yeah, these are really good. These, you guys are smoked, delicious. With a little silly little sauce at the bottom. I only. You know, I'm wondering, what is it, out of all the decades and years that you've been doing this, what are you most proud of? Is there one wine where you said, yep, that's it, hit it out of the park? Well, I'll tell you something, and it's, it's, there's a lesson there somewhere. I'm not sure what it is, but. I would say, in some sense, you know, it was two years ago, we did a vertical tasting of Cigar Volant, 25 vintages of Cigar Volant, from the earliest vintage to the most recent. And we did this out of large format bottles, with the few extant bottles that were, were there. So the first vintage was 1984. So we had 84 out of a nine liter bottle or a six liter bottle or whatever the heck it was. And then all the other, subsequent vintages. Of all the wines we tasted, 
the two most interesting wines were the 84 and the 85. Oh. The first two, first two wines I made when I knew nothing. When I knew nothing. I knew that Grenache was a red grape. I knew it needed to be kind of ripe. I knew you, you didn't want to put it in barrels. That's pretty much all I knew. Huh. So over the years, it just really developed. Well, so the point, though, is I think that all these years of thinking about it and meditating about it and brooding on it, really, it's been just this big circle. I mean, I, I think in those days, I had this intuition, if you will, or just connection to something, the universe, that is irreplaceable. And, and so what, what I'm saying is that your intellect only takes you so far. Your intellect um, can also just take you in circles. But what you really need is this kind of beginner's mind where you're sort of experiencing things for the first time in, in this new way. And I think in so doing, I think there's things you can discover that, that otherwise you, you can't really discover in your, in, your, in your intellectual mind. You know what that reminds me of? My wife and I just got back from Spain and we toured the uh, Picasso Museum and it's interesting to see him from 15 years old all the way until old age, how he unlearned all the stuff that he was taught. It's kind of like you graduate from UC Davis, here's all the things you're supposed to do, and then you kind of unlearn it over the years and you start to go off of your gut feel and right. don't worry about it being perfect, right. but just having its own personality. It's kind of cool to hear that. You can go back and see that. So for anybody who has, well, if you don't have a vertical, where can people go online? What's your website? We have two websites. There's bonniedunevineyard.com. You want to make sure you don't have any issues with uh, vertigo or epilepsy for that particular site. <laughs> it's, it kind of spins around a little bit. Or you um, haven't had too much wine. Not too much wine or, or other, other psychoactive substances. And then the other site is uh, bendunesolong.com, which is my, my uh, blog, which is more or less monthly. Speaking of mind-altering substances, how much acid did you do back in the day? Actually, zero, come to think of it. I mean, I... That's what the double rainbow guy said. Nobody believes it. It's true. <laughs> it's totally true. I, I came to it naturally. Well, Randall, thank you for this. This has been awesome. We're about to eat. Look for Randall on Twitter. You can also find Bonnie Dune on Twitter. What's the Twitter handle for that? Bonnie Dune Vine YD. I think Vine Yid. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Oh, of course, and thank you for all your contributions to the world of wine and inspiring so many other wine drinkers and winemakers. My pleasure. It's been fun. Cool. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Let's eat.